Hey everybody, Elizabeth here again, and I'm going to show you a quick video on um, cutting out flowers and adding them to your, your cake design. Um, so it's pretty simple. Again, I'm in Photoshop. I have Creative Cloud, but um, you know a lot of different Photoshops will work for this, but this is what I'm familiar with, so this is what I'm always going to kind of explain things in. I also am using a Monoprice tablet that I bought um, from the Monoprice website, but you can get yours on Amazon. They're about 50 bucks. Very inexpensive, really great um, way to draw in, in a Photoshop without having to use your mouse and stuff. So check those out. Links are down below in the description, as always. Also a link to where you can get the brushes that I got from the awesome Keenan Lafferty from the KNKL show. I love him and I love his brushes. And they produce great results, as you can see, when you're drawing um, uh, your cake sketches and makes nice, beautiful uh, you know, effects here. So uh, the one that I like to use of his is the chalk brush because it, it just makes things look so, you know, just nice texture. It would help if I had a right color, but it just provides this nice texture on your cake, this nice painterly look. So I have my little rustic cake here that um, I, I need to add some flowers to. So the flowers that the bride wants is actually some wild flowers, and I already found myself a picture on Google. I just Googled wildflowers, and uh, saw what came up, and I found one that I liked, and I saved it to my file. And, you know, it's got lots of stuff in the background. That, that can be a problem. But I use a program called Topaz, and you can download a, uh, a free copy of yours. Just uh, search for Topaz filters. So um, you can download a free copy to do as a trial, see if you like it and then um, give, you know, you can purchase it later if you want. So you go up to filter, once you install the, the filters of course, go to Topaz, and then you have all of these options down here. And we wanna go to Remask, and this is the cutting out filter. And this is what I use to cut out all my flowers. It makes it so fast, it makes it so easy. Um, it just is really a time saver when I have to do like 10 cake sketches in a day. So we go to Topaz Remask, and it, it's gonna open up and bring me to a new window. So there is this green kind of haze over everything. And that basically is saying the green is what you want to keep. Um, so I want to basically outline with a blue brush. So you've got the green brush, the blue, the red brush, and the blue brush. And then down here you've got a green fill, a red fill, and a blue fill. And it's just very simple, like basically you're just saying everything that's blue is the edge or is what I where I want you to look and everything red I want you to get rid of and everything green I want you to for sure keep. So you'll probably only have green in the very, very center and everything else is going to be outlined. And the great thing about this is you don't have to be specific. So I'm just going to make my brush a little bit bigger. Oops, not my color range. Press my, my, uh, what is that? The bracket key? And I'm just going to like brush basically roughly over all of these little flowers in here. And I'm not, I don't care so much about the edges. The computer is going to figure that all out for me. I just want to make sure, I'm basically saying, look at all these edges here. It's all that. And everything green in here, I for sure want to get rid of. But I want you to look at this area where the where the leaves and petals and stuff are kind of sticking out. Computer, I want you to look at that. And then go to my red, and you can for sure get rid of everything in this background. So once you do that, you can press Compute Mask, and it's going to think. And there you go. So. It has found all of our edges, it has found the center, and it has got rid of the whole background. And we have some kind of some of these little gray areas in here. That's fine. We don't have to worry about those. We don't, you'll, you'll see why it, it's going to be totally fine here in a minute. But if there's something funky that you think that the computer kind of missed, you can just tap with your blue brush and just say, I want you to look at this a little bit closer. And 
re-evaluate whether or not you're keeping some of those areas. Like for instance, I know that there was another flower up here that I would like, I would like it to possibly keep. So I'm going to take my green tool and I'm just going to touch a couple little spots right where I know that flower is and it's going to bring that back up. So everywhere where you touch green, the computer is going to reevaluate that area and bring it up more. See? Easy, easy, easy. And likewise, anything with red, you can say, I for sure don't want that background stuff in there. So I'm not, it's a lot easier than trying to cut stuff out. But I mean, you really don't need to worry about it because it's going to be so see-through, it's not going to even matter. So I'm going to say, okay, that looks good. It looks just like, you know, what we had a second ago, but it's not. So down here in the layers, you can see that there's background copy and background. I'm going to drag the background into the trash. And now you see we have our cutout flowers. I'm just going to move those to the side and drag them over onto here. And I'm going to press Command T to just make them a little bit bigger. And now I have just like these perfect little, you know, wildflower bouquets that if I would have tried to um, cut this out by hand, it would have taken me forever. It would have, you know, not looked as nice. It would have had these like really hard, funky edges. It just would have been very, very difficult. So just using the transform tool here, Command T to kind of squish things and move them around. And then I'm going to put one more down here. Kind of squish that down so it's a little bit lower. Kind of rotate it a little bit. And sometimes I will go to my clone stamp tool and I'll press down Alt to, to say where I want to copy and then I'll just kind of basically copy a flower from one spot to another just so that I have a little bit of variation and my uh, bunches don't look too similar basically. So we've got that. Now we can also cut out simple flowers. I also need a little pink rose for this. So I have a little pink rose that I'm going to open. And this is already cut out from the background. Uh, it's an RGB color, but I just want it for the sake of showing you guys. I'm just going to fill in the background here. So let's say you found a rose that's from Google and it's got a background in it and you want to cut it out. You just go to image, sorry, filter, Topaz Labs, um, remask. And just like we did before, we're going to take our blue brush and I'm just going to go right around the edge. Just like that. I'm going to fill in the background. Compute. And this would work if, even if it was on like a, like if it was just outside in nature and had a weird background, like it was in the grass. Or something it would still work just as good. So now we delete the background and it's cut out. So the other problem is that this flower if you go to image and canvas size you see is very small. It's only 477 kilobytes and I want this to look nice on my sketch. So first what I'm going to do is change the size to 5 inches and I did that by pressing the crop tool which automatically brings up this boundary box and I set my width to 5 inches and my resolution to 300 pixels per square inch because that's printable and then I double clicked in the center and that made it bigger but it's kind of pixelated and kind of crummy looking so I'm going to go to one of my other filters that I use for everything which is in Topaz Labs and that one is clean and what this is going to do is it's going to give our rows a painterly effect gets rid of some of the JPEG 
you know, kind of weird looking fuzzy stuff. And it also is going to make it look um, more like we drew it. So it'll match our drawing. I'm just going to zoom out so you can see a little bit better. So there's all these different things that you can try here. You can go crisp, or you can do curly or grunge, but I tend to always do cartooned, and that is, I mean, this kind of looks good too. Um, I tend to do cartooned because I like that it makes, sort of flattens everything, and it kind of gets rid of any detail. I don't want this to look too uh, realistic. I want it to look more like a painting. So it looks kind of watercolored. And you can adjust all your levels, you know, over here your strength of how much the filter is being applied, how strong you want your edges, um, all that stuff. So you can mess around with all of that over here if you want. But I like how this looks. So I'm going to press OK. Come on, come on, I know you can do it. It doesn't usually go this slow. I think it's having a hard time because of trying to video this and do Photoshop. So then um, the last thing I usually do is I, when I have my brush tool selected, I think it's a little bit smaller, I will press Alt, the Alt key down to sample some of my highlight areas and then let go. And then I will just paint in a little bit of highlights on my on my uh, rose to just sort of add to that brushed and painted look and then I'll do the same thing hold down alt and I'll pick one of the darker colors and kind of paint over the shadows so if I were to try and you know obviously paint this flower it would be great fun and I would love it but I don't have time to do all of that so I want to convey the idea of a beautiful pink rose, but I don't want it to look like I just cut out a rose. So we have our nice, you know, painterly looking, painterly looking uh, rose here, and I'm just going to highlight some of these very tips of edges to just really bring out the shape. All right. So then I'm going to move that to the side, drag it over. See, it's really big, so I'm going to press Control, or sorry, Command T. Oops, not that. Shrink down. And rotate. Maybe not that much. Maybe look right there. Maybe this way. put a couple other little lines on there. And then usually I would uh, I would apply that painterly effect to uh, all of these little wildflowers and stuff as well, but I just didn't didn't do that this time because they're so small. I just thought it was not a big deal. I want this to be darker, darker. There we go. So instead of applying the painterly technique to them, I'm just going to draw directly over the cutout to kind of just give it some variation like that. Just like that. Channeling my Keenan right now. Good, 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 beautiful. We like that. I love the way he does his little talks. So that's about it. All right. So that's how you basically add flowers. I think I'm going to flip this one, actually. Oh, no. I accidentally drew on my flower layer. Do the 
just select this, copy, delete, and then paste again. Okay, so I think I'm going to actually turn it this way. And that looks better. I don't know why. But I just do. I just feel it. All right. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial on how to add cut out flowers and use topaz filters when cutting out your flowers and as a quick and easy tool to sort of add details to your cake and stuff. Um, as always, if you have questions, leave them down below in the comment section and I will answer them as soon as I can. And don't forget to subscribe if you like watching videos and want to know when I put out new videos. And also check out my Patreon page where I put in in-depth videos on my channel called Sugar Geeks. And uh, we go over really cool stuff and um, really don't want to miss that one. So I will see you guys next time. I'm Liz Merrick and uh, have a great day.